Hi everyone. So today's session is uh, curriculum design and it's learning outcome two that we'll be doing. My name is Shazia Khan and thank you for attending today's session. So the first the first learning outcome we went through was learning outcome one. So I'm just going to give you a recap of what we've done in that learning outcome. So you've got an understanding of what we've done in the first learning outcome. So the learning outcome one was to understand approaches to curriculum design and development. We looked at the social, political and economic context of education and training. We looked at contemporary issues and also looked at elements of um, professionalism, dual professionalism. We went into looking at the purpose of the curriculum design and why there was a need to a curriculum design in place. So we looked at the process. We looked at analysing the purpose of the curriculum design and also looked at what that involves in regards to curriculum design. We then went on to look at um, different things like meeting diverse needs, supporting effective teaching and promoting critical thinking and problem solving. We then went on to look at elements of a curriculum design in regards to identifying different types of curriculum design and making sure that we looked at the different approaches uh, and the models and the uh, of curriculum design and development used. So we looked at models such as um, Tyler <clears throat> um, rational linear models and the importance of that models and what the strengths and weakness were of that model. We then went on to look at the TABA model which was uh, the teacher as a designer model. And that was um, followed on from Tyler's uh, model by Hilda Tabba. And it was in regards to her model in regards to identifying steps to develop um, a, a successful curriculum. We looked at the con constructivist um, approach and why that was so important. We then went on to look at the backward design by uh, Wiggins and McTang and looked at the element of why that was important when designing a curriculum. We looked at competency-based uh, education and also looked at elements of um, the importance of learner feedback when developing curriculum and why that's important uh, and looked at evaluating teaching methods and also looked at elements of um, feedback and why that's so important within a curriculum, why there's a need to have feedback within a curriculum. We then went on to look at elements of um, the issue around, uh, if there's any issues around um, risk management and looked at that. So in regards to learning outcome, we looked at student surveys, feedback, teacher self-assessment, reflection, we also went on to look at peer review and collaboration, uh, longitude studies and research and why they were important. So we looked at the elements of, uh, you know, putting together a curriculum at the start of it. Now we're going to be able to develop a curriculum in learning outcome um, two. So the indicative content we'll be looking at in learning outcome two. So we'll look at the evolution and development of inclusive learning technologies to enable inclusive learning. A look at theories and models of a communication application of theories and models of behavior management. Also look at uh, teaching and learning, eating regularity, um, legal and awarding organization requirements, theories and models of behavior and management as it this relates to individuals and groups we looked at theories of learning and their applications application of learning theories to teaching and learning and application of theories and models of communication education to education and training the key terminology that we'll be looking at is how to develop a curriculum so what is the process um and what steps need to be taken to put in together a good curriculum um, so we look at steps like needs assessment, the planning session, the development, content development, what content needs to be included, the pilot delivery, uh, looking at the revision and the completed curriculum package. You know, there has to be steps that we need to take to make sure that the curriculum package that we put together is successful and make sure that, you know, 
that everyone understands the purpose of the curriculum and what the planning needs are in place. So we'll go on to 2.1 and that is to identify learning objectives and outcomes required for curriculum um, design. So why there's a need to have these learning outcomes in place um, and understand the purpose of a curriculum. So learning outcomes explain what students uh, should be able to achieve by the end of the course. Uh, this may be changes in their knowledge, skills, uh, attitude and behaviours. And this is the first element in to improve the course design and look at the assessment curriculum to see whether there's a clear framework for curriculum development. So we're going to look at different steps. So the first one is to understand the purpose of the curriculum. So begin by understanding the purpose. So what are the needs of the learners? You know, it's, it's the most important thing to identify what the needs of the learners are. That needs to be taken into consideration when putting a curriculum together, you know, why there's a need to have the curriculum in place, what are the objectives at the end of the curriculum, what are the goals and what you want to achieve with the learners. So they are the main things that need to be put in place. Co conduct a needs assessment. So, you know, identify the skills, competence that students need to acquire. You know, make sure that the requirements of subject matter are at the same level of the student. Make sure you are considering what their needs are rather than considering the needs of yourself because that's the people you are designing the curriculum for. Uh, secondly, define learning objectives. So again, look at the SMART objectives. Are they specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound? You know, you what should the students be doing after completing the curriculum? For example, you know, students need to write an essay after doing the curriculum or students need to analyse data at the end of the curriculum. So you need to define your learning objectives because it's really important when you're designing a curriculum to identify the learning objectives at the start so you are able to achieve them learning objectives. Align with educational standards, so ensure the curriculum aligns with any sort of educational stand standards. Make sure that, you know, when you have put a curriculum together, make sure they are, you know, it is in line with the specific requirements of the uh, awarding body or, you know, the standards that have to be met. Um, consider Bloom's taxonomy, and that is it's really important in itself to consider Bloom's taxonomy, what you need to identify how long it needs to take you to utilise the learning objectives, make sure you are creating the assessments in line with the standards, make sure you are identifying what the objectives are and you are using uh, the wording around Bloom's taxonomy because that's really important when it comes to identifying any sort of elements of um, the taxonomy. Incorporate assessments, evaluation methods. So make sure you have a variety of different methods, not just assignments or exams. Make sure you have a variety such as maybe projects, role plays, quizzes, presentations, you know, to measure the learning. It needs to be really, really important. Ensure progression and uh, sequencing. So organise the learning objectives in a logical sequence. Um, ensuring that they build on each other. So start with foundational concepts towards more advanced concepts and knowledge. Um, consider diverse learning styles. So make sure that you are considering learning styles because you have got a different variety of diverse students. So you need to consider what learning style would apply to them learners that you have got. You, know, you need to make sure you are catering for every learner. So you may be a kinesthetic learner, it may be an auditory learner, it may be learners with difficulties that you need to identify at the start. Foster critical thinking and problem solving. So include objectives that promote higher order thinking skills, such as critical thinking skills, problem solving skills, you know, analytical skills. Make sure they're able to research as well. Review and refine. So after identifying the learning objectives, make sure they are achievable. And make sure you, if there are any changes that are needed, make sure you are making the changes as you're going across because that identifies that you are, you know, ensuring that you are aligned with the curriculum activities and you are achieving them by a certain uh, time frame. Document, um, and, document and communicate learning objectives. Uh, clearly document uh, the learning objectives in 
and the outcomes in the documentation and the course materials that both instructors and students understand the whole purpose of the course, why the course is being designed, what the learning objectives, and they understand that as well, so it's really important. Continuous improvement, so regularly review your curriculum, regularly um, develop it and give feedback based on any sort of changing needs, any sort of curriculum development. The process is changing every day, so you need to be making sure that you are looking at the changes in the curriculum and continuous improvement every term. So in conclusion to 2.1, by following these steps, you can identify clear and effective learning objectives and outcomes will guide the curriculum design and help students achieve the desired outcome. So you need to be identifying what the curriculum designs are, why they're so important, why learning objectives are so important, learning outcomes, uh, you know, for creating the course, you know, you need to ask their specific questions that instructors uh, want their course to raise, you know, learning outcomes can answer that, you know, it might be uh, better if you think differences, learning objectives are usually viewed by instructors perspective. So the learning objectives describe what a student will learn in the particular course, and that will be identified through the curriculum. So you need to make sure you're on board with that as well. So 2.2, uh, develop a curriculum for an education uh, and training program. So curriculum development entails the planning, implementation and evaluation of educational programs and courses. Ensuring effective teaching and learning involves establishing learning objectives, selecting topics, determining instructional methods and evaluating student outcomes. So firstly, you know, there are, there are some key steps to develop a curriculum, define the program goals and objectives. So clearly articulate the specific learning objectives of the education and what you want to participate at the end of it. So make sure, that, you know, you have a, tr a strategy in place that identifies your goals and objectives. Uh, conduct a needs assessment, identify the needs of the audience and the audience is the students making sure if there's any gaps that you tailor the curriculum around that, making sure that you've completed them gaps and you are meeting the needs of the learners. So it's so important that you are able to identify and meet the needs of all learners. So you conduct a needs assessment for this. You need to select content and uh, topics. So determine the content and topics. So make sure that you are uh, determining what content you will be and what topics you will be doing and make sure they are covered in the learning objectives and make sure you're considering them um, in regards to if you have any supplementary material to use, make sure you are assessing the needs and what the needs are of the individual and make sure that you are creating this um, plan that you have, um, you know, the right topics and uh, the um, units in place. Create... Um, curriculum framework so you need to develop an outline framework for the curriculum make sure you are including the modules the units the duration of the units what the pre-requirements are and what is expected on the uh, framework design learning activities and assessment again looking at learning activities you know you need to make sure that you are developing a program that is able to uh, have assessment methods that are varied you know you need to make sure there are things like you know, you have lectures, uh, discussions, quizzes, role plays and exams, you know, and make sure you are using that as a real life ap application. Uh, ensure alignment with learning outcomes. So when you're designing a curriculum, you need to make sure that the uh, learning outcomes, that every component of that has a learning outcome and has objectives and it's aligned with that and making sure that, you know, the uh, curriculum will be effective in line with the learning outcomes. Consider pedagogical approaches. Determine the pedagogical approaches that will be used, such as active learning, experiential learning, flipped uh, you know, classroom or problem-based learning. Choose the one that will suit your learner's needs. You need to make sure that you are taking into account all the time when you are doing this curriculum, that you are taking into account the learner's needs and wants. Select resources and materials. Make sure you have resources, technology in place, which will support the curriculum. Ensure they're accessible to the learners as well. The learners need to have these materials in place so that when you're putting a curriculum together, you have um, resources in place that the uh, learner could use 
IT resources, it could be any other resources as well. You need to make sure that they are able to get to them resources and have access to them. Um, in corporate technology, again, looking at technology such as a learning management system, LMS, which is an outline platforms and multimedia to enhance any sort of learning experience. Make sure you are looking at that and making sure that you are identifying that, okay? And making sure that you are developing that learners will have use to your technology. Plan for assessment and feedback. So develop a clear plan. It's really important that you have a plan together, uh, which is a timely plan uh, and ma making sure that constructive feedback is given and also you know that the assessments that you uh, have in to in regards to assessing the learners are valid and reliable um another really important fact is addressing inclusivity and diversity and that's really important because everyone every learner is from different diverse areas so you need to make sure that you are assessing the the learners and making sure that you have strategies in place that are inclusive and you know that could be things like, you know, offering learners that have a disability alternative uh, learning paths and promoting diversity and equality within the um, classroom because you need to make sure that you are providing and catering for every learner that is in place and not moving away from that if you have inclusive learning. So the next one is to look at outlining a schedule and timeline. Create a detailed schedule for uh, the unit and make sure you have uh, everything covered, uh, assessment dates. And it has to be a timeline that's achievable and realistic. So you need to make sure that what you are putting in place is realistic and timely for the individual. Uh, develop instructor resources. So if instructors will be involved, provide resources, guidelines and training to effective, effectively deliver the curriculum. So pilot, the next one is pilot the curriculum. Before implementing the curriculum, conduct a pilot test with a small group of participants to identify any issues or improvements. If there are any changes to be made, this is the time to do it so you can pilot the curriculum and if there's any identification of any improvements that need to be made or any changes that need to be, this is where you would be able to review and revise it as well uh, and make sure that it's effective and you've taken on board the feedback and, you know, this will be done continuously throughout the curriculum to identify the effectiveness and, um, you know, and make sure that changes are put into place based on the feedback that has been given uh, by in the pilot uh, when the, uh, the curriculum has been piloted. So you need to, this will be done throughout and it's good to have this in place so that, you know, if any changes need to be made in place, they would be put in place straight away. Document the curriculum, so create comprehensive curriculum that uh, includes an overview, learning objectives, module units, learning assessment, you could have the, uh, your assessment criteria, and it should have a, a guide for everyone to read as well. So make sure that you create a, a comprehensive and a detailed curriculum that is able to identify elements of the assessment that they have to do, what learning outcomes they have to meet for for each unit, what resources are available, what learning materials are available. And then also implementation and evaluation. So launch the program <clears throat> and continuously evaluate its effectiveness. Like, like I said, you need to make sure that you are continuously evaluating whether the, the curriculum is working, you're collecting feedback from participants and making adjustments as you're going along. So in conclusion to 2.2, Developing a curriculum is an ongoing process that requires flexibility and adaptability to meet the changing needs of learners and the evolving educational landscape. Keep in mind that curriculum should be designed to support learners in achieving their intended learning outcomes. So make sure that, you know, when you are developing the curriculum, you are reviewing it all the time. If there's any changes that need to be made, you are putting the changes in place and meeting the needs of the learners you know that's the most important thing that phrase is really important when it comes to trying to identify and meet the needs of different learners so now we're going to go on to 2.3 which is to plan assessment approaches to meet the learning outcomes of curriculum uh, following the necessary guidelines 
So planning assessment approaches to meet learning outcomes of a curriculum is crucial in ensuring that curriculum is effective and that learners achieve their intended goals. Assessment methods should align with the curriculum's objectives of being fair, valid and reliable. And there's some elements that we need to look at in regards to following the assessment. So assessment of learning refers to methods used to verify student knowledge in order to ascertain whether or not they have attained the goals of their individualised programmes or the outcomes of the curriculum, to issue credentials and guide decisions about the student's future programmes. Diagnostic assessments, formative assessments, summative assessments are just a few of their many assessments that may be used to assist students and teachers to achieve curriculum-based learning goals. It's also been observed and discovered that assessment method must be connected with the learning outcomes in order to be considered as an outcome-based assessment. So to review learning outcomes, by first revisiting the learning outcomes specified in the curriculum, these will guide your assessment planning. So select appropriate assessment methods. So, you know, student learning styles vary widely. So, you know, we need to maintain that when we're looking at the assessment methods and their strengths and challenges with respect to assessments also vary. Uh, instructors need to consider that variation as they choose assessments for their course. By varying the way we assess student understanding, we are more likely to offer opportunities for every student to demonstrate their knowledge and understanding. This can be accomplished by creating courses with three or more forms of assessment. For example, it could be things like class projects and exams. This can be accomplished by offering choices of how to be assessed as well sometimes. For example, giving students the option of writing a paper or taking an exam for a unit of instruction as long as by the end of the course they have done both forms of assessment. This might be accomplished by offering multiple questions and having students choose which they want to do. So, you know, consider the assessments so identify the different more suitable assessments to measure measure the achievement and learning outcomes. Some of the learning assessments that we are listed on there are things like, you know, written written assessments, maybe exams and quizzes or essays, like I mentioned. It may be performance assessments, for example, presentations, practical exams, uh, projects. It could be observations, maybe clinical assessments, teaching demonstrations. It could be portfolios or e-portfolios. It could be self-assessments and peer assessments. Online assessments is another one. For example, it could be online quizzes, discussion boards, discussion forums. Self-assessment and peer assessment, another very popular one. Uh, formative assessments could be, for example, you know, quizzes, homework, and summative could be assessments such as, for example, final exams or final assessments. When we design an assessment, we have to consider, you know, uh, what we assess is what our students study. So, you know, engage with and explore in more depth by beginning with what we want our students to know, what we will be able to do. We can design and choose assessments to demonstrate the appropriate knowledge and skills we are aiming for them to learn. After choosing student learning outcomes, you know, it's important to make a grid that places learning outcomes across one axis and the assessment that demonstrates their achievement of those outcomes on another in this way, you know, members will be able to check what their students are learning and then identify that through the assessments. Again, aligning assessment with learning outcomes. That's really important when we look at aligning assessments with learning outcomes because we need to make sure, as I've just mentioned, that the assessments that are put in place are aligning with the learning objectives that are put in place for that unit and making sure that we are aligning with that axis where, you know, um, it's clear how students, you know, will be answering the question or, you know, uh, making sure that they are they know what they are able to do. Uh, diversify assessment types. So incorporate, as we said, a variety of assessment types, uh, different to assess cognitive levels and skills, for example, use more formative and summative um, assessments as well as assessments that target different aspects of knowledge and application, critical thinking, you know, use things that will measure the student's learning as well. Design clear assessment criteria. So define clear and specific assessment criteria 
or rubrics for each assessment so it outlines what the criteria is so the learner is able to understand that and the level. Address inclusivity and accessibility and that is again really important when it comes to identifying any sort of methods of assessment you need to be inclusive and because every learner is different and those that have disabilities need to be catered for as well. Consider timing and schedule. Make sure you plan when assessments will take place. Make sure they're aligned with the schedule of the curriculum and make sure that you have put in place uh, assessment to allow for adequate preparations. Provide adequate resources. So when it comes to assessment, you need to make sure that learners have access to all the resources and materials. If they are, do not have access, then it will be difficult for them to complete the assessment. So make sure uh, they have uh, materials, resources in place, um, and you know you have they have access to technology because that's really important. If it's an online exam, they don't have access to any computers. You know you need to make sure they've got access to um, computers in place so that they are able to, you know, do the assessment around that. Prevent any sort of plagiarism and che cheating. So implement uh, policies and practices in place to prevent plagiarism and cheating. And this may include using things like Turnitin software, uh, detection, you know, um, AI detection, um, creating open book exams or monitoring uh, assessments in person or online would try to, you know, prevent any sort of plagiarism. Make sure that, you know, if you do an exam, make sure it's open book so that the learner is able to use that to help them complete the exam as well. Training for instructors. Uh, if instructors are involved in assessment, provide them guidelines for training, put policies in place, how to administer grades, how to mark, how to make sure that you their you know uh, assessment marking is measuring the student's understanding as well, and that is fair and consistent. Communicate assessment expectations. So throughout, whilst you're teaching, make sure you are uh, clearly communicating assessment expectations to learners. Um, and making sure that, you know, you are including things like how you'd expect it to be formatted, make sure they understand what their learning outcomes are, make sure they understand what they are doing while, when doing the assessment and identify, you know, uh, instructions for them so that they're able to follow the instruction and there may be specific instructions for different uh, units that they need to follow. So it needs to be clear, uh, uh, clearly communicated to the learners. Monitor and adjust as needed. So continuously monitor the effectiveness of assessment methods. Collect feedback from learners and instructors uh, and be prepared to make adjustments based on the feedback. So again, looking at making adjustments, revising assessments uh, re uh, in regards to the feedback given to modify any sort of assessments around the feedback you've given, making sure you are monitoring them and adjusting them to the needs of the learners. Ensure ethical assessment practices. So ensure that uh, practices adhere to ethical guidelines and principles and policies that are put in place. Respect learners' rights and confidentiality and maintain the integrity of the assessment process. Make sure you are, you know, um, you know, respecting the integrity of the assessment process and taking on board all the principles and policies in place. So document assessment procedures so you know it's really important that you make sure you have data in place that you you document the procedures that are clear and accessible and make sure they are available both to the learners and the um, instructors as well uh, assessors in this case uh, evaluate and curric uh, the curriculum and assessment regularly re uh, re evaluate the assessment you know and also make sure that you know you are making sure that the teaching of the effectiveness of the assessments are there to measure the student's understanding. Make sure you uh, have assessments, modify assessments and instructions leading up to better student learning. So you are making improvements all the time. So in conclusion to 2.3, by following these steps in the short assessment approaches aligned with learning outcomes of the curriculum, you can create a fair and effective system that supports um, student learning and achievement um, and you know a, any sort of the more students you know that can move toward deep understanding uh, the effective you know the assessment would be the best time to you know make sure that you are making sure you are analyzing 
and cha making cha changes to the assessment procedure in line with the learning outcomes will help the, uh, the learners achieve more. So you need to make sure that everything is in line with the assessment uh, criteria and the learning outcomes. And if there is um, changes that need to be made, you need to make them changes so that the um, the assessment procedure, uh, the assessment system that you've put in place uh, is fair and is uh, effective. And, you know, learners are able to, you know, make sure they are they're following that learning outcome as well and achieving uh, in line with uh, their learning outcomes. So the next one to look at in regards to this is learning outcome. Sorry, it's 2.4, which is looking at producing resources to support the curriculum. And this is really important when it comes to curriculum design or anything. Curricular resources include the different kinds of material, be it digital or physical, that teachers use in for their teaching textbooks, lesson plans, and have a significant influence on the student's opportunity to learn. A teaching resource can make take many different forms and will mean slightly different things to every teacher, parent, and child. What the basic definition of um, is simple, a teaching resource is a material um, that is de designed to help facilitate learning and knowledge and acquisition. Learning resources are tools in education, which includes things like maybe videos, flip charts, whiteboards, overhead projectors, PowerPoints, smart devices, and software. The purpose of this is to provide important opportunities for students to explore ideas and uh, knowledge, collaborate, solve problems, and develop their knowledge and skills. You know, so these resources, there's a need to have these in place because they will help support the learner. And producing resources in a curriculum is an essential part of any sort of curriculum development to make sure that you know these resources are in place for the learners. So firstly, you need to identify uh, resource needs. So determine what resources you would need to support the curriculum and consider the subject matter, learning objectives and the needs of and preferences of the learners. So all this needs to be t taken into account in regards to what kind of software you, where you'll need, why you will need this software and how will it will help the learner. Compile existing resources. So you need to make sure you are putting together existing resources to support the curriculum. This may include textbooks, it may be online materials, it may be um, articles, it may be other educational contents, make sure they are put in place so that the learner is able to understand why there's a need for these and why it's a good thing to have a variety of different resources. Create a resource list. So develop a comprehensive list of resources needed for each module or unit in the curriculum and be specific about the materials required. You know, make sure that they are meeting the requirements of the learning outcomes. Make sure they are the learner is able to understand the material and the resources that you put in place and why there's a need to have these resources. And also, you know, you need to identify this for different modules uh, or different units and what the specific materials needs are for that unit, be it, you know, uh, online material, be it articles, be it textbooks, make sure, you know, you could provide resources such as ebooks for the learners so that they're able to understand why they need to use this for this unit make sure it's very clear for the learner. So you've created this resource list. Write content. So if you're creating written materials, lecture notes, handouts with the content, make sure that they align with the learning objectives. Ensure that it's clear, concise and engaging. Do not do learning, learning objectives, learning outcomes that don't align with you know, the materials you put in place. You need to be creating materials that would align with the learning objectives. Make sure if you're looking using textbooks that they align with the uh, learning objectives and the curriculum. Make sure if you're using uh, other resources that they align with the, and it's clear and concise for the learner. Design visual materials. So visual materials can be things like PowerPoint slides. Make sure that they are uh, enhance the student engagement and uh, the resources. You know that you're not just relying on just PowerPoints. You're using visual, uh, visual and um, materials such as you know diagrams things like that so because everyone learns differently develop multimedia resources so create multimedia resources such as videos animations podcasts 
ensure they have good quality for the learners so that they're able to understand and identify what they need to learn and how they need to learn that. So, you know, so you are making sure that the resources you uh, develop are of a high quality and accessible to all learners. There's no point developing resources if they're not accessible for learners. Ensure accessibility. So make sure all the resources are accessible to a diverse group of learners, including disabilities. So make sure you've got uh, accessible formats in place for images. You know, if you've got students that are blind, you need Braille. Uh, you know, you need to make sure that, you know, you've got resources available. You know, make sure that the text images are learners are able to understand. And, you know, make sure that you are taking the needs into account when developing resources. Uh, review and edit. Uh, proofread and edit all you eliminate any sort of errors, clarity and enhance. So ensure that language is appropriate for the target audience. Do not put jargon in there. Do not put language that the uh, students that you are doing the curriculum for will understand. Make sure, you know, you've got it's clear for them to any, uh, understand what you have put in there. Include references and citations. So properly cite, reference any external resources or materials used in your resources to maintain academic integrity and avoid any sort of plagiarism. And this is a big one because, you know, it's really important you, the learner moves away from any sort of plagiarism or not following the policies in regards to that. So making sure that they are, ref they are references and, you know, making sure that elements of plagiarism are not adhered to. Adapt for online and blended learning. So if the curriculum is delivered online and blended learning, adapt resources to fit that. Consider things like interactivity, user experience, accessibility. You know, you could do online resources with uh, the learners. Make sure that, you know, if, you're, if your teaching is online, you are making sure you're adapting to the online teaching for them, making sure that it's more inter it's interactive, like face-to-face -face teaching, and make sure that you are involving all the learners so they have this experience. Um, utilising open educational resources, so explore availability of other resources online, especially educational resources that can be integrated into the curriculum, and that could be something that's quite cost-effective. Uh, and it could be available to everyone, especially if it's free. And for some educational materials, it is free online. Include practical examples and case studies. Make sure you re use real, real life examples. And, you know, it will be more engaging for the student and, you know, relatable. So, you know, incorporate practical examples, case studies, real life examples of scenarios so that, you know, they can relate to more, but also it becomes more engaging and the student is able to identify things from a personal perspective, but something that's real life as well. So it, it gets it more engaging for the student. Provide practice exercises, always provide practice exercises in the curriculum and problem solving it allows the learner to apply what they've learned and it's a valuable skill, so it reinforces any sort of concept. So make sure you provide practice experience exercises within the curriculum so that they're able, the, they're able to look at the problems, allow the learner to identify and apply that, what they've learned in class. So, you know, they'll be able to um, see if, you know, it, uh, they've met their learning outcomes by, you know, identifying the experiences through you put in problems in place, you know, providing exercises and working around that. And they'll you'll be as the assessor be able to identify if the learner has learned something uh, through the uh, curriculum and also through the teaching and reinforcement of that. So create an open educational, which I've said, provide any sort of uh, practice essays, include practice um include examples and case studies, create a, a resource repository. So organize a resource, you know, have a, a page on uh, your VLE that would look at all the resources that have been put in place. So it's easily accessible for the learners and the assessors. Um, and it's a dedicated website where they could go on to look at things like that. Consider copyright and licensing. So be aware of any copyright licensing issues especially when using third party materials and ensure that you are complying with laws in that are 
uh, attribute to things like cot copyright. Make sure you are taking it, considering any sort of licensing or copyright when you are using online resources or materials from a third party. Um, you need to also test resources. So before implementing the curriculum, test the resources with a small group of learners to give feedback and make improvements. And again, here, we're looking at the curriculum being um, you know, improved all the time. And if there's any feedback to be given to make improvements, this is where it will be used. You know, people will test the curriculum all the time and it will change and make improvements to it all the time, which will help because it will be catering towards the learner's needs. So update and revise. So regularly, as I said, we'll be updating and revising the resources to make in line with the ex any sort of educational standards and practices that need to be put in place. So make sure that we are aligning with that, make sure we are meeting the standards and practices that are put in place and all the time updating and looking at any changes that we need to be put in place. And this could be through, you know, feedback given from learners or anything. Document resource usage guidelines. So clearly document guidelines for instructors and learners regarding how the resources should be used including any sort of sequencing or best practice. So it's really good in regards to that, you know, for regarding how resources should be used, if there's a need for more resources, this all needs to be documented, but also, you know, uh, the, what the learners need, what resources they need to do the learning outcomes and if they need any resources in regard to assessment. This could be all the time updated, revised, and have a resource usage guideline in clearly identifies in instructions for uh, learners so how to use the resources and what recommend you, you what uh, is recommended for best practice as well so in line with um any elements of assessment and resources and things like that um curriculum support resources are tools that help uh, teachers deliver the curriculum uh, and they can be important because they make the learning engaging uh, resources like visual aids interactive tools and hands-on materials can capture students attention and helping teachers stay up to date as well is aware of teaching resources and curriculum changes to be able to produce high quality resources and creating providing effective resources is essential for any success of your curriculum these resources should enhance the learning experience support and achievement learning outcomes and cater for the different diverse needs of uh, different learners a good curriculum plan helps to ensure the students learn the same skills regardless of who taught so it helps teachers meet students where they are teachers can use technology students are already familiar with so that's a form of resource when choosing resources teachers can consider things like you know whether it's relevant to the curriculum and the learning goals as we mentioned uh, whether it's appropriate uh, whether the resource is appropriate for the students learning um, and whether it's up to date as well and, you know, whether there's a need to have that resource. Um, there are many different types of resources what that teachers can use, including online or printed resources, as we mentioned earlier, such as worksheets, lesson plans, videos, digital resources, uh, mobile applications and software packages. Physical resources can be things like, you know, textbooks, library books and revision guides. And these are needed when it comes to elements of, you know, curriculum design. Resource is a big part of that and should be considered quite deeply when looking at meeting the learning outcomes and the resources. So <clears throat> these are the references that we've used for the learning outcome to today's session. So you could go on to these and some of these will be ebooks online as well that you could refer to when looking at uh, your assignment discussion or just having a read around developing curriculum or designing a curriculum. So there's a list there and there's also another page of um, references there. Um, refer to ebooks and e-books and journals on Moodle for this unit. There's also additional reading for this unit and further reading I've put in a link there which is something on core curriculum development and delivery toolkit and it's really good. Uh, the link is there, it's a foundation.co.uk and it's really good. It looks at the con content, how the development is and what can be used to develop a good curriculum for the learners. So have a read of that, go on to that. It's a PDF document and it's really interesting because you'll be able to identify how a, different, how a curriculum is designed and developed and uh, what tools are used. So... <clears throat> 
So we've finished learning outcome uh, two now. The next learning outcome is learn the final learning outcome, which is learning outcome three. Um, if you have any questions regarding anything on this unit, um, please email learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk and submission of the assignment is to be done on learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk and the submission link is there. Assignment submission is after two weeks of the completion of the unit and its delivery. So the next part of it is what we'll be doing in regards to the uh, learning outcome three. Um, and I just want to reiterate what we've uh, just give you a quick summary of what we've done in today's session. So you've got a better idea of what we've done, what we've covered, and then we'll go through learning outcome three next. So we've looked at inclusive learning today, uh, just a summary on technologies um, to enable inclusive learning. We have looked at theories and models and models of behaviour. We've also looked at elements of, you know, uh, the fact that we've looked at the resources that need to be used, uh, learning theories, what te teaching and learning theories are applied. We've also looked at elements of um, resources such as, you know, putting a curriculum together, what is required of the curriculum, what steps need to be taken to produce a good curriculum in regards to that. And also looked at elements of, you know, whether uh, developing curriculum and how we would develop that for education and training purposes and why it's important to be able to plan and have goals and objectives in place when designing a curriculum. So we've looked at elements of uh, developing a curriculum in learning outcome two, being able to develop a curriculum. The next one we'll be looking at is learning outcome three. Thank you for attending today's session. And if you have any questions or any queries, please email learnerwork at ukvarsity.co.uk. Thank you.